What is up, everybody, from the AT&T 5G Virtual Studios? Welcome to Group Chat, presented by AT&T. I'm Susanna Collins, alongside my guy, Stephen Keel. Happy Friday, sir. We are back. Week one in the books. Week two right on tap, and I am as jacked as I was <laughs> seven days ago. I am too. I, I feel I feel even more ready. You know, we got like we just kind of like wet our palate a little bit on opening weekend, and <laughs> yeah. now we've got more games to look forward to, including one tonight. Keel Sporting Kansas City taking on Orlando. That game at mm -hmm. seven thirty p.m. Eastern on FS1, Fox Deportes, and uh, TSN. And you know, SKC coming off a nice little two one come from behind win over the Red Bulls, your former team. We saw Daniel Shallowy score again. Good to see mm -hmm. him getting goals. My guy, Gianluca Busio getting starts at center forward, and uh, also good to see John Polskamp getting the start for the injured Tim Melia for them. Um, and Orlando, you know, listen, we'll, we'll take a, a draw against uh, Orlando for them. I feel like that wasn't the worst start in the world for Orlando. No, no and, and, you know, Pato goes down. Hopefully it doesn't sound like it's too serious. All they said is yeah. no surgeries required. So you hope for a quick recover for, for him. Um, but also, yeah, SKC, a big road win come from behind, like you said. Uh, Polito didn't start. Johnny Russell didn't start. Tim Milia was out. You thought, ooh, this could be a little dicey. But in typical yeah. Peter Vermees team fashion, they find a way to get a result. And speaking of Peter Vermees, this will be his sixth 100, 6 0 0 100 Stop MLS it. game as a player and coach. Um, Look at you dropping number. some knowledge. You know, I it's Did funny you... is my Pe my Peter Vermi story is I, I and I don't know I've told him this when I've seen him is when my freshman year of high school in Colorado he was playing with the Rapids he actually came to speak to my high school team's uh, end of the year no. banquet as like a sp uh, a speaker <laughs> yeah so we we go way Stop. back we way go way back. back oh yeah Dang. that's my Peter Vermi story who knew yeah. That's you know what? That's Wait. a really good story. What did he say when you told him that? Did he remember? Did he like pretend to remember? Like, oh, I yeah. think he was. I think he kind of like entertaining. He was like, <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, I think it was one of those. Is you know, as a player, you get different appearances and all that stuff. But in, he got a. He was the keynote speaker <laughs> at, at Mullen Mustangs High School Soccer Banquet. Um, so I think he was kind of like, yeah, that was cool. But he, his, I think his main That's message cool. was like, uh, don't party, be focused, do that kind of. You know, I was like, that's a good Listen. message, Peter. He's a smart man. Whatever yeah. PV says, I'm kind of buying into. Clearly a very seminal moment for you in your uh, your burgeoning soccer career, Stephen Keel. So thank you for sharing. That's it. That was great. You're welcome. What a way to, to kick off the, the weekend. Um, guys, this is group chat, and we want to hear from you. So hit us up on that group chat hotline, 401-206-0MLS. We just, you know, anything that's on your mind, MLS-related, maybe not MLS-related, just yeah. hit us up. And you can reach us on uh, on our, our Twitters and our social medias mm. as well. Don't forget that we do respond. Um, but let's get to uh, let's get to some content. Let's get to some of the things okay. um, that that made us want to get into the group chat. i um, especially coming off last week because we saw some bangers, Stephen Keel, in week one. Top bins only let's look at some of the incredible goals that we saw in opening weekend um i mean okay hi randall they all just, just i mean just stop it just stop it right stop it, it right it's now. unbelievable you know it's it's is it a cross is it a shot it doesn't matter it, it's spectacular so uh susanna the question is we have so many good goals that they, we couldn't fit all of them into one video look at, look at little kaden uh, look at little kaden i know Clark. So, what, what oh. were you doing when you were 17 years old that's what i want to know <laughs> Right. What, we, what was you I don't know, even know what I was doing, but I was wasn't scoring bangers like that at a professional level. Definitely not. And then definitely not. I, but there's so many good goals. Like I said, we couldn't fit them all into this one. But I'm curious for you if you had to pick one because mm. we're all about putting people on the spot here. Which one? Yeah. Is, is your favorite. Uh, the, I think the the one that gave me the feels like the most, the one mm. that kind of you know made me sort of like almost stand up off my couch and start fist pumping was the Randall Leal goal. Um, number one, it just surprised me. It kind of like, I, I, like you said, I wasn't sure if that was a cross or if that was an actual yeah. shot. And then it just, I mean, just kind of kisses that top bar and just, uh, uh, it was just, it was so well struck. Um, and it kind of, do you know what it's, it reminded me a little bit of the worldly that Darlington Nagby scored last year for Columbus against yes. Chicago. I think it ended up being goal of the year. 
but you know where he kind of like volleys it to himself and just and uh, right it, I, it, it it elicited that same sort of reaction for me so that was the one i kind of kept thinking about what about you listen i love i love that goal and speaking of darling to nagby we also had another the goal reminds me i think everyone saw this reminded him of, of darling to nagby is seattle sanders Zhao paulo the way oh. he he two touches the ball comes out from a clearance the pillow soft first touch and then just mm -hmm. comes through it half volley volley whatever you want to call it strike top corner i mean it, it's it's an unbelievable goal and, and for me <laughs> i know it's week one but yo this has got to be up there for goal of the year no matter what 100%. else happens this rest of the year um you just you dream of those moments you know those are things you do after training where you just serve balls up you pop it up to yourself and you just mm -hmm. hit volleys and then he just connect it mm, so sweet so and a game winner you know so uh Ja Paolo, Did you ever have well a moment done. like that, Keel? Did you ever have a moment like that where you just struck the ball so beautifully? You knew as soon as you hit it, it was going in, and just like oh, you know that moment where just like, Mwah! oh, did you ever feel that? <laughs> uh in training, oh yeah, oh yeah. In training, like when we would play small it's all the, sided, it, it counts. Yeah, I I was the defender that like in small side <laughs> the goalie would roll me the ball and I was just letting loose. And then, you, you know, if it went in, you were the hero. But if you didn't score, <laughs> or you hit it over the bar. Like, the, the guys on the rest on your small side of the team, the forwards are like, what are you doing? I'm like, what? listen, guys, I'm back here just playing defense, getting pelted with shots. Let the bear eat a little bit. So every <laughs> now and again, and when you connect with it, you feel it. just feels It just feels so, so good. fresh off your foot. Yeah. Ooh, but never in a real oh. game does it come off like that. Yeah, I, that, that moment has eluded me my entire life. So I'll just live <laughs> vicariously through, okay, okay. through guys like you and Xiao Paolo. But well yeah. done. Well done to you. Well done, sir. Um, all right, Kiel, we're going to get to the really important stuff. And by important okay. stuff, um, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm talking a little fashion. I'm talking mm -hmm. care. I'm talking the whole, the whole thing. So this segment is called It's a Look but look as in L E W K. This is something that I actually like engage with in my group <laughs> chats. Like if ever, you know what, you just kind of like look like crap, like hair messy on top. And like, I've got like the same sweatpants on for three days and I'll send a selfie to my friends and I'll be like, it's a look. And this is kind of our thing. <laughs> That's how this segment was born. Um, okay. But the guys in this segment, believe me, they are not wearing the three day sweatpants. They, th these are, these are head to toe, mm. complete, looks and um we're gonna kind of run through these and and give our thoughts on wow i just okay raul <laughs> really diaz yeah. is coming in hot i don't the, the suspenders the hanging suspenders the combat boots everything it's just wow wow he wow just fantastic right and then he goes out and scores a brace so i guess you know looking he, he's yeah, bringing you know. He brings it. Uh, for me, he lives up to it. FC Dallas is uh, Kosi <laughs> Burgess. Look, I love this. Like he's next level with his look, and I I love what it is. The glasses, everything, Back. top top quality. Wow, this is um our tour. This is just a everything's very fitted, very very fitted, very tight. Yeah, um, you know, very fit. Oh, and I have this boy. sweatshirt. Mark Anthony K <laughs> rocking the Bernie yeah. sweatshirt. And I actually have, I have that sweatshirt. Yeah. It's like the best thing I've ordered. Honestly, love, love this. Oh, I, love and it. look at, I love a bold print. This is, yeah. this is something that new I who. can't pull off, but like, dude, new who is just absolutely crushing it. Oh, okay. Don't like, I bow because I want this t-shirt. I don't know where the heck uh, Jacob Green got this, but I, I need, need this that in my life. Yes. Whitney. Ooh. Maxi. Maxi, I think classy. the most professional, right? Like that's a tailored Dang. looking suit. Like, yo, you're classy right there. Oh, okay. Hani Mukhtar, I, the, the belt buckle. It's the belt buckle for me. Is that a customized belt buckle with an M for Mukhtar? Or is that like some brand I that so. I don't know that I should know about? Because I'd like to think that he had this specially made for him. That's, that's what I I'm going with. That's what I'm sticking with. Yeah, yeah. You, you sometimes see people with maybe like a necklace of their initials or something like that. But yeah. like, if you got a belt buckle with your like your initials, um, <laughs> yo, that's like, you're, that's cool. You're that's really cool. I'm like, it's, yo, dang, it's amazing. 
It's amazing. No, I, I'm glad, I'm glad that we did that because I, we were talking on the call up last week about, we were talking about the coaches. Like we did, I think I told you, we did our yes. power rankings of best dressed coaches. Yes. And I was saying, I need to see more drip from the players, mm. you know, because like, I feel like, I feel like we don't really, that's not something that gets a lot of attention and we need guys, you know, how like, like a Cam Newton in the NFL will just yeah. wear something so ridiculous ridiculously over the top but it's so awesome because then everybody's talking about it and it's just it's a look it's a look and it generates a conversation and i'm saying we need a little bit we need more of that in mls i want these guys to be bold so i feel like this is a yeah. start if i had to give out an award for for week one it's going to raul Ruiz diaz for the whole i just i wow the it with the combat boots the jeans tucked into the combat boots and then the suspenders mm -hmm. hanging I, wow I love it that, you know, it so many of these times you see these these players expressing themselves on the field. This is a way for them to express themselves <laughs> off the field. Give us a little a peek behind the curtain of like what's your personality, you know? Like what Thank are you, you what are you coming with 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 the look and all that stuff? So I I respect everybody's uh they're they're different in their own ways, but I love Agreed. this. I love that clubs are capturing arrival photos. Um I love that they're putting them out there cuz yeah, like you said let people see some of this stuff. It's fantastic. Yeah, I know. It's great. It's really great. Self-expression is very important. Yeah. Um, all yeah. right. Speaking of self-expression, time for In My Mentions, Stephen Keel. Um, okay. What was going down in your mentions this week, sir? Well, in, in my mentions, <laughs> um, you know, we always a good place but we were talking about <laughs> uh goals of the week bangers and yeah. in goal of the week uh the nominees they left out a couple because there were so many and in my mentions uh josh weber uh tweeted at me and was like hey a defender goes out and scores a banger and can't even get a nomination like stick up for your fellow defenders and i'm like bro uh, you know what josh you're absolutely right so here 100%. is my shout out um, dc united's brendan hines i I, I love this for so many reasons because as a center back and a defender, when you get this off the field and the ball comes to you, a lot of times you take a touch and like, hey, you pass it off to maybe Julian Gressel on the wide over there. But he says, no way. First time, ball's coming across my body. Banger in the back of the net. What a strike. Um, and it's so because the ball, as it's coming across his body, is so difficult to hit because you got to catch it just right. Otherwise, you could be slicing that Heck bad yes. boy out for a throw in, which is never good. So listen on his uh, DC United debut, a guy from Colorado, which always gets love. So here is my respect, Josh Weber hitting me up uh, in, my, in, my, in my mentions. Here's out to uh, Brendan Heinz -like from DC United. Love the banger from a, de a defender nonetheless. So that was in Amazing. my mentions, which was, you know what? That, that was, that was a appropriate mention to call me out for that. So. Um, not that I cho choose who's in our in the yeah uh, exactly you know, we, have, week. we are not, powerless. Not, I'm just we here. can give due credit um, on this show. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what's going on in, on my side, Susanna. I know your mentions are all <laughs> are always um, something colorful. They colorful, 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 uh, lively, and this week, lively. Yeah, man. Um, it's, it's a, it's a wild ride, you know, you it's, it's really, you don't know what you're going to get, you know, it's a real grab bag. Um, this, <laughs> this, this particular week, um, it was, it was very, uh, Verde. If you get where I'm Ooh. going with this. You get where I'm going with yes, this? I do. So no, this was actually really cool. So, um, on the call up this week, we had Ben Sweat. Um, he's defender for Austin FC, basically, you know, coming off their first ever MLS game. Um, and they act, they looked pretty good. You know, it was a, it was a decent effort against against LAFC. OK, they lost the the match, but, you know, it looked like a side um, that had an identity, you know, like they had a game yes. plan. And that's always that's kind of what you're looking for, especially your first your first time out, you know, the this is everyone's first look at you. So I feel like, you know, they, they were definitely had their, their heads held high. So we, we do this interview with Ben Sweat and, you know, we post it on Twitter, put it out. The amount of Austin fans that were so jacked to see their guy, you yeah. know, getting, getting some, some coverage, getting their team, getting, getting coverage on, on MLS sites. It was just really cool. You know, so it was actually, my mentions were great this week because it was just a lot of, 
really enthusiastic Austin FC fans. And you can just get a sense of that fan base and that supporter base in, in Austin. And it matters, you know, it's, it's, they're yeah. one game in and this team matters to that city. And um, it was just, it was really fun. I just had some good, really good banter with, uh, with some of the Austin fans. So I wanted to to give them a shout out this week because they were, they were active in my mentions in the, in the most positive way. And to be honest, it's not always like that. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> not everything is not always uh, rainbows and butterflies, but yeah, half staff to Austin. I mean, week one, um, you know, you heard in the preseason, Matthew McConaughey, the minister of culture is talking about, you know, what they're going to bring. And they delivered the, the viewing party that they had back in Austin, a huge, ah, you know, big screen, great. tons of people out there. A band was playing. Um, you know, I think we saw a tweet where a uh, they, they threw, they flew a banner over the stadium um yeah which was just so cool so listen austin fc love love what you're doing like you said on the field not the result they wanted but there's a lot of positive that takes from it off the field so i think many. they're gonna bring it game in, game in and game out is they're they're gonna be fun to watch um and i'm excited exciting to have soccer yes. in austin all right on that note time for five good things stephen keel yes. and yes. uh this first one Wow, I'm just gonna hats off to LAFC, mm -hmm. man. This was such an incredible tribute to Mo Fascia, who is one of the founders of the 3252. He served as their their vice president. He passed away from COVID mm -hmm. back in March, and the team went all out to honor his legacy. Here, let's check it out. Yo creo que hoy para mí en lo personal ha sido uno de los días más difíciles eh, en mi vida del fútbol. Creo que por primera vez no quería llegar al estadio. Ah, fueron momentos tristes y momentos emotivos, pero yo sabía que tenía que estar aquí porque tenemos que honrar de la mejor manera a, a Mauricio, ¿no? una persona que, que lo dio todo por el club y que nos enseñó muchas cosas. We just had a moment of silence and you will see in a moment a tifo honoring it. The man who we talked about, Mo Fascio, one of the founders and a vice president of the 3252, passed away last month after contracting COVID. What Mo has given to this club and to, to me and to this family here has just been like, there's no end to it. I'm going to take that ethos, that ethic that he had, that love that he had for every single person and um, bring it to, bring it to everything that we have, you know, bringing that open-mindedness, that love and um, really make sure that Everybody new to the culture, everybody new to this club feels exactly the same way that I felt when Mo um, said what up for the first time. He made everyone feel like they had a voice and that they mattered. And that's not something you see in a lot of people. So definitely coming back to the bank and first game without him, it really triggered the emotions a lot. His personality and his presence and how much he loved LAFC just came across every time we got the chance to be around them. Seeing him holding the supporter shield and that smile uh, showed how much LAFC meant to him and as a result he meant uh, an incredible amount to all of us. Una persona que siempre, siempre se aseguraba de agradecerte el más mínimo detalle, siempre se aseguraba de hacerte sentir especial y siempre por más loca que pareciera una idea o aunque estuviera en contra de ella te la respetaba y de algo malo lo convertía en algo bueno. like yeah emotional about that i have um so i had a, i've i've met mo um on a oh, few wow. occasions um just going out to to games at uh bank of california stadium and just i mean like everything that they were saying in mm -hmm. that video is just sort of the epitome of of who he was there was nobody that loved that club more than him and mm -hmm. he was so he was so grateful for like anytime we were there and we wanted to do something with 3252 mo was like bent over backwards to like make it happen you know he would mm. let me stand with the fans like just just that type of guy 
Um, and a, a friend of mine, um, Amy, her, she's, she's part of the 3252. Her husband was part of the group that made that TIFO. And, um, so she had kind of get tipped me off about it, uh, beforehand. And I was just like, wow. But to see it kind of unfold, to see all the players honoring him yeah. as well with the, with the armbands. I mean, it was just, um, it was, you see how much it matters. You know, you see how important the supporters are to the club yeah. keel and i just thought this was such a beautiful tribute to a, a really beautiful special life yeah absolutely such a touchy moment with the, the tifo and the armbands and you you can hear you know head coach bob bradley uh the speak about mo afterwards and 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 it is it's it's people like mo it's the supporters like him that they they are the the, the lifeblood of these clubs of, of mls in general and um, you know, you said you had the, the privilege of meeting him and it just sounds like he was just one of those guys that you can meet for 30 seconds and it felt like you had been friends for, for, for years and stuff. And, you know, you, people speak that this made him feel, he made people feel special and respect mm -hmm. it, which in itself is a, is a, a special treat. So, um, you know, prayers to his, his family, uh, his friends and, and the entire, uh, LAFC club. Hundred percent, hundred percent. But wonderful job um, in honoring him. Yeah, he loved very, to see very it. nice moment. Um, very nice moment. Woo! All right, um, some more good yeah. things. This is this is this is really good. This is really good, mm -hmm. Keel. Nick Ramondo, okay, the goat, the ledge, right? He announces yeah. his retirement last season, but guess what? He's not saying goodbye because he was just named academy coach at RSL. <laughs> Um, the guy is going to impart all of his wisdom, hopefully, onto young up-and-coming goalkeepers. And it was, I mean, it just feels so appropriate. It feels like he's going to just excel in this new role. I love seeing some of the uh, players, current players, I'm like, yes, man. Like, Steph Fry was like, oh, this is such good news for young goalkeepers. Um, it was really cool. It just feels like such a, such a positive move for him and the club. Absolutely. I think even the Marcus Beasley, you know, wishing him luck and everything. But can you imagine you are a, a young player in RSL Academy, you're a goalkeeper, you know, you, you have high aspirations, you walk on the training field and then, oh, there's arguably the best goalkeeper that's played in MLS. He's going to be your coach from now on. So, I mean, I think it's just such a great, great win-win um, for, for, for Nick Ramondo, for the RSL community, the players, everybody involved. Uh, couldn't be happier for him. And as well as coaching, they're, uh, I guess they're kind of like the dynamic duo, also retired, uh -huh. Kyle Beckerman, <laughs> the one that also could be referred to as one of the GOATs. Um, what a legend he is. He is now joining the, the ranks as well, joining Utah Valley University as a coach. So Utah RSL guys staying within the community. You also love to see our EMLS guys just kicking oh. butt and taking names they are right? dominating paulo netto uh who represents atlanta united the latest to uh to generate some some good good trophy and hardware he wins south america fifa global series qualifier so we've got like we are well represented i feel like our emls guys are like just gaining more and more Dude. stature in this, this right? fifa gaming world and it's pretty cool I love, I, listen, anytime an EMLS player is on top of the podium with a trophy, yo, sign me up for that. So he joins, I think last week we had uh, George Adamu, Kid Mamito winning the North American qualifiers. qualifiers. Yep. Paulo Neto doing it down in South America. He moves on to the South America playoffs. And then hopefully, fingers crossed, all goes well there. We can see him at the FIFA <sighs> e World Cup. But the dude Let's is, go. the dude, I've seen him. Yeah, he is legit. He's um, amazing. And, and it, he is so good and, and an awesome dude and nice guy as well. So congrats to Paulo and congrats to Atlanta United. Heck yeah. All right, moving on. FC Cincinnati doing some really cool things in their mm -hmm. local community. They have partnered with three local Black-owned businesses for a limited edition co-branded apparel line. Will you look at this, trip? Like, Yo. The, multi, the double color sleeve? Like, this is fresh. I am this, so, I so into this. I, I, I love it for so many reasons. One, you know, we always talk about our clubs, you know, being involved in the community. And this is a, a perfect example. Obviously local businesses, given the past year, it's been tough. So this is great for Cincinnati, FC Cincinnati to get involved with this. But like you said, yo, these clothes, this apparel, I, I need this. 
I need this. Like, this is, I right? love what Cincinnati's doing this year on the field. I'm loving what they're doing off the field. Um, sign me up. I need some of this. Uh, th these shirts. I don't know who we need to talk to, but let's let's get them on the phone. <laughs> I know exactly. I there there is a lot of good things happening in Cincinnati right now. So this is this is just you know icing on the cake of what I think is already going to be a pretty uh, tremendous season for them. So let's go. All right, hey Keel, guess what yesterday yep. was? Uh, Do you know what yesterday was day. Oh, Earth day. I Earth I'm from day. Colorado. Of course, I know when Earth Day is. <laughs> Come on. Who doesn't love Earth Day? Um, so to celebrate that, MLS has announced several projects as part of MLS Works' Greener Goals Initiative. Um, the initiative will see the Rescue League partner with one tree planted for a reforestation project. This is so cool. They are going to plant 27,000 trees, Keel. 1,000 for each club yes. currently playing in the league in national forests across the United States and Canada. So that's like, it's they're planting trees. They're literally saving the world, saving the world. But this is, I love I, this, every year MLS gets really behind this. And mm -hmm. I've done some volunteer days with them um, where we've gone out and, and plant made gardens. We built gardens, um, you know, just cleaning things up. Like it's a, it just, it feels good to give back yes. in that way. And I'm so glad that MLS every year just kind of extends their, their efforts with this. It just, it's, it's yeah. it feels good, right? It feels good. It's important. We only have one Earth. Uh, we need to take care of it. I love that MLS, the league level is, is behind it. You saw all the clubs getting behind it, players going out, planting trees, getting involved with the environment. Uh, the Philadelphia Union, uh, Subaru Park making an announcement. They're trying to be the first MLS stadium to have zero landfill from their stadium, yeah. which would be amazing. So I, I love that initiative. But yeah, right. L l listen, Earth Day should be every day. We should get, we we only get one Earth, one planet to live on. Let's take care of it for not only for ourselves, our kids, our kids' kids, and so on. So love what we're doing. Exactly. Everyone get out there, take care of take care of Mother Nature. Hundred um, percent. And guys, for more on that initiative and tips to create a healthier environment, please visit yes. mlssoccer.com or twitter.com/slash mlsworks and other social platforms. Um, such as our Instagram page for MLS Works. They post a lot of cool stuff on there. So get involved, y'all. Um, and also just, you know, in the spirit of five good things, hit us up on that hotline, guys. We want to yes. see what you're seeing out there that are good things. We're all about positivity. So send those good things our way, 401-206-0-MLS, or hit us up um, on Twitter. Right. Let, whose birthday party would you all want to attend, right? That's a really That's what good I want to know. I know. I loved right? that. I loved that. Um, well, Keel, on the note of good things, we had a chance to catch up with a guy who uh, who had a pretty big week mm. in uh, in week yeah. one of MLS Not too action. bad, not, not a bad not week, Not too Diddy. shabby. <laughs> not too shabby. Yeah, we had a chance to catch up with Sasha Question from the LA Galaxy. This is our AT&T 5G call. Time now for AT&T 5G call to the field. And we are so pleased to bring in Sasha Kleshton from the LA Galaxy. Sasha, always great to catch up with you. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you guys for having me. Um, okay, so the, the show is called Group Chat, okay? This is like the whole concept <laughs> is kind of um, loosely based on the group chats that we're all inevitably a part of, especially over over the last year. And so one of the things we like to ask our, our guests is, what is your, your group chat style? How many are you in? Are you, are you dropping emojis? Are you a frequent commenter? What does that look like for you? I think it depends on the mood, uh, <laughs> but I am, uh, I'm dropping the emojis. Usually I'm throwing in funny stuff and then it's the crying, laughing face emoji is my go-to. Oh, it's, it's the best. And so do you, are you like, do you keep the, you know, cause sometimes group chats come and go and flows, you know, like there'll be like lots and lots of banter and, and then it kind of dies out for, are you the one that kind of <laughs> reignites it? Or are you like, oh, someone has done it. Let me chime in. Uh, I'm both. I like to chime in. I like to throw in some stuff. And then every once in a while, I like to be the one who shoots the first message after a couple of weeks or so and, and gets the banter going again. 
See, I like that. I appreciate that. Are you on different group chats? Like, I mean, do you still have like a group chat with your with your Red Bulls guys? You got one with the Galaxy guys. Like, what what's the spectrum of group chats? You know chats what's funny is we we've got uh, our fantasy football league is how <laughs> most of our old New York Red Bull guys keep in touch. And so I don't think there's I think Ryan Mira is the only one still on the New York Red Bulls, but it's called the Red Bull Fantasy League because this is where we all met together but everyone's gone in different places now but that's how we keep in touch and have good banter i feel like fantasy football keeps the world going it's a great way to stay in touch with these guys that we don't play together anymore some guys live in miami some guys live elsewhere i mean i'm out here so we're on different time zones as well so it's 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 a great way to keep up with guys sasha are you a meme guy or like a gif guy like do you, no. do you drop those in? no <laughs> No, I'm not good at those. I'm not like very savvy with the, there are guys that are throwing in these things. I'm like, where did you find this? <laughs> it's perfectly, but I'm not the guy. I don't, I'm, I'm not too technical. That, so, uh, but are you, are you the guy that's like one long paragraph or are you kind of like, you know, a few texts, you know, like a few words in like nine consecutive texts where you just like blow it up? Oh, no, I don't like that. That annoys me. <laughs> <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Yes. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm one text guy. I, I respect I, that. I feel like I've had to kind of like adjust because I was always like the long paragraph and then like all of my friends just started doing the one right after the other. And I feel like I've adapted, but it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel authentic or, or right. So well, see, it goes back because I'm, you know, I don't know how old you guys are, but text, text messages used to cost per text message. So <laughs> if you're sending like one, two, three, four, you're yeah. paying like 25 cents per, it starts. To That's right. They used to. I don't know that because now it's all blue and I message. They don't, they don't get it. Do you remember, do you remember when it used to be, you had to like hit like the, the one button, like three times. Like yeah. it was like, you know, to spell out the words, like I'm yeah. dating oh, yeah. myself, but like, yeah. it was like, you didn't have the just keyboard. No, like, you didn't you have a keyboard. To, oh, no. God. Yeah. So I much harder. When, I, when I was like, I think it was my rookie year. I got a, a sidekick, which had like a <laughs> yeah. keyboard. Oh, I thought it was the coolest guy of all. <laughs> yeah. I was feeling Damn. myself. You were living, Sasha. Look yeah. at you now. Look at how you revolve. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Um, all right. right, let's. We will talk um, a little soccer, I promise. And uh, the Galaxy could not have had a better start to the season. A 3-2 win over Miami. Two goals from Chicharito. You get the game winner. Um, I mean, it did. It, you really couldn't have drawn that up better, could you? I mean, I would have drawn it up as like a more 3-0 comfortable <laughs> win, but – um i think for everybody who was maybe neutral and watching at home that was a fun game to watch yeah. on the afternoon to start the season so uh to top it off you know i saw after the game like pictures of pharrell and tom brady in the in the crowd so now Actually. they know my name now they know my name <laughs> that, that's, they do they do know your name i mean it just seemed like the game this the celebrations obviously i think everyone's seen the the, the post-game interview with chicharito but um it just seemed like it just had like a, a special meaning i know it's just week one but was it just a little extra special um given the circumstances with everything going on yeah to be honest i think it felt good for a lot of us so for you know a culmination of, of things uh, a few variety of reasons you know chicharito uh for him first and foremost had a tough year last year on and off the field um and he's been open and he's talked about it and he's come back stronger and i think the way he showed up to preseason uh, fit, you know, working with extra trainers, nutritionists, all the things he's doing to make himself better as a player and as a person. So for him to get those goals, I think everybody was just happy for him. We, we were ecstatic for him. Uh, for me personally, I didn't score any goals last year. So to get a goal in the first game of the season and to get us the win, that felt really good, felt a little bit redeeming for me. And then for the whole group as a collective, the players that were here last year, we were bad last year. There's no way, uh, other way of saying it. We just weren't very good. And we didn't have many games where we had tons of possession or mm. good chances. So uh, that mixed with Greg coming in with this new style, the vibe around the team is so good right now. Like we are, we are just such a team with good vibes. And it's like, we went back in the locker room. We got the music blasting again. It just oh. felt like the start of something special. So it was so fun. I love that. I um I had a conversation with Landon Donovan at the end of, of last year and we were kind of talking about the the galaxy and the struggles that they've that they've had and he was like, you know, it seems like it seems like the soul of the team 
had kind of gone missing, had kind of mm. gone lost. And it feels like Sasha, like you're talking about like the good vibes all around. You can see it. I mean, like you could literally see the difference, even in in the body language. Do you feel like it's kind of restoring the galaxy, this like, you know, storied franchise in MLS? Um, are Do you feel like you're on the right path right now? Yeah. I mean, it's still early and let's be honest, we weren't perfect in the game, but to get three points out of that shows a lot of character and it shows a lot about the guys. And, and like you said, you know, you guys can maybe see it from the outside, but from the inside, we can feel it. Like I, I can feel that we're building something special. Okay. Is it going to all pan out this season? Maybe not. Maybe this is time, something that's going to take some time, but we're taking steps in the right direction. We have a plan in place. We've got a style of play. We've got guys that are bought in. We've got good camaraderie, brotherhood within the group. We feel like a family right now. So it's still early days. Let's let's not get ahead of ourselves. But I think we're going in the right direction. We're feeling good about where we're at right now. And, and, and you kind of mentioned before, you know, or we mentioned what a great day, game winner for you, celebration, good vibes. But I'm curious, you make the trek back home. What's it like? going back walking in your house your daughter your son come to see dad dad scores the game winner on tv just can you put into words what that's like well it was it was special for me i got a little funny story about it it was my daughter's seventh birthday right. and i was missing uh the cowgirl tea party that was happening oh at the that sounds amazing at the same time <laughs> as my game and my wife i talked i was speaking to her on the phone before the game you know we talk before every game she always tells me good luck Mm -hmm. And she said, who's commentating your game today? And I said, I think Taylor Twelman. I know Taylor. We used to play together. Mm -hmm. She said, you should text him before and tell him that after you score to shout out Vera for her seventh birthday. And I said, ah, I didn't even score last year. It's a bit presumptuous of me to text Taylor <laughs> so, hey, after I score today. And then Taylor texted me after the game. And I was like, shoot, like I should have texted you. My wife told me to text you. So then he, he shouted her out on Twitter. But my wife sent me a video after the game of the kids celebrating after I scored, and it was awesome. They were uh -huh. asleep. They were asleep by the time I got home, but the next morning when they woke up, they came and jumped in bed with us, and they were proud because they both started playing soccer recently, and they're uh -huh. both really into it. And it's like the highlight of the week for my wife and I when we just go take them to practice like Monday through Wednesday, and we just watch them play and they enjoy it. So for them to like understand what's going on now and watch me on TV, that was a special day. Sasha, do they did they understand like kind of what a ledge their their dad <laughs> <Yeah>. is? <laughs> like, does do they do they, do they, they get, get it? it? Do they understand yet? Uh, no? uh, I don't think so. I'm not the ledge. <laughs> let's be honest. But um, <laughs> they are excited to come on Sunday and watch us play in person because all last season that didn't get to happen. So uh, yeah, I'm very happy for them to be in the stadium with us again this weekend. One of the things that was just so awesome last weekend um was seeing supporters at mm. games again um yeah. you know it was just it, as somebody who, who loves being at games as well i mean it's just it's just one of those intangibles right that just you, you can't it's it's hard to replace that um when it's not there what what was it like to actually have supporters and like hearing the chants mm. hearing even though you know you weren't playing at home that yeah. had to feel pretty good yeah, we had a great group of traveling support down in Miami and just to come out on the field for warmups and hear them and and clapping for them was like, that was just such a good feeling again. Like we all missed that so much. And then to score a goal in front of them and like they came kind of coming down the stands in the front. This guy was giving me high five. I saw that. It was so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, was, so yeah, good. it was just such a good feeling. The emotion of scoring a goal in front of people just feels so much better, you know, than these empty stadiums we had to play in last season. So, yeah, um, yeah certainly awesome. It was really fun. I love it. And and just want to take a little bit of a step back, you know, obviously we focus on the game and the Galaxy, but just your career as a whole, I think this is season number 16 wow. professionally, which that in itself is is remarkable. I think almost 300 games played in MLS, 460, you know, throughout your career. Um, for you, how do you do it, man? You know, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know how, how else to ask you. I mean, what, like for you, what's like been one key? Um, you're still fit. You're still producing even uh, this, you know, 16 years later. So, I mean, for you, if you had to kind of narrow it down, what would you say is, has been key to that? Um... I'd say two things, uh, a couple things. Uh, one is just like my love for the game. It's 
like some guys I've talked to, some friends I've played with over the years, they're just like, oh man, I can't wait till I retire and I just see what's next. And I'm like, man, I can't, I'm not looking forward to that day. I, I think some guys are like excited about the end of their career and I'm going to be devastated. Like I'm, I know it's going to be hard on me, like mentally not getting up to going to training anymore. So the part of waking up every day and still having this job and going to train, it's, it's not lost on me. It's the best part of my life besides my family. Like I love doing it. So that part keeps me going hands down. Uh, the next part is you know, Preki was my coach when I was a youngster and he just talked about how he started doing yoga when he was in his mid thirties and how that just prolonged his career. And so, you know, since I turned about 30, I've been trying to do yoga. I know I should be doing it more often than I'm doing it, but a lot of stretching after practice just to make sure I've, I've knock on wood, never getting injured. And I think just being, trying to be like with the young guys and trying to be like cool and hip with these dudes, like trying to stay young. It, uh, it feels good. Like I, I don't feel like I'm 35. It's crazy to think that I'm 35 years old. I, I honestly, in my brain still think like I'm 18 years old when I get out there and I get to play. So I just feel good. I feel lucky. I feel happy mentally. I feel great. Physically. I feel great. Hopefully I can keep it going. Love that. See Keel, if you had only, done yoga you you could you could still be out there too i know but man way I, to go way i hit to yoga go. i think ryan gave uh he said the same thing kind of credits <laughs> yoga to, to plan how long he did so um the preki and, and, and sasha i got is it too late to start yoga you know? i know exactly <laughs> Not too late. start stretching <laughs> Start stretching. Uh, Sasha, it's going to be a, a pretty pretty special day on Sunday for, for many reasons, but obviously, you know, facing off against your your old team, uh, the Red Bulls. And you said, you know, you've still got a lot of a lot of connection to to some of your former teammates and certainly uh, the fan base there. Um, what kind of emotions go through you when you're when you're facing a former team like that, that you that you were so you know, you were just such a part of the of the culture there? You know, over the years, the emotion starts to fade a bit. You know, the, the first couple of times playing back at Red Bull Arena, that was emotional. It's also different playing out here than to playing back at home in front of those fans. And, and also, let's be honest, the team has changed so much yeah. since the three years since I've been gone. You know, there's only a handful of guys still there that, that I played with, that I have a connection with, that I'm still keep in touch with. So it's it seems like a different club. I would say the supporters have remained the same. And, you know, I always cherish those moments that I had at Red Bull Arena. I loved playing there. I loved every moment of playing for that club. But, you know, the emotion goes away a little bit as time goes on. And as there's a lot of different faces on the field now for New York Red Bulls. For sure. And, I mean, Sunday, I think, you know, like you said, your, your family, for the first time, you know, your family's going to see you play. The supporters, uh, limited capacity for the galaxy is, is that what you're probably looking for is that you know i don't want to put words in your mouth that you know just having the fans having your you know the entire stadium cheering for you is that what you're looking for to most sunday afternoon yeah yeah not only me i know the whole locker room is just so excited to like see people in the in in the stadium like i don't know probably six or seven thousand people but mm -hmm. i think to us it's gonna feel like a full stadium i think the even the fans that haven't been there, like they're going to be loud. They're going to be fun to have my family back there. All the guys on the team, we're all like so excited for this home opener. It's going to be awesome. It is going to be awesome. That home opener on Sunday, 5.30 p.m. Eastern on FS1, Fox Deportes and TSN in Canada. Sasha Kleshton, always a pleasure to catch up with you. Thank you so much for the time. Best of luck this season. And uh, how, how about more goals? I'm gonna yeah, on Sunday. I hope so. I hope we see a few more out of me this year. But thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks, Sasha. Good luck, man. Ooh, Keel. We have some fun matches to look forward to this weekend. And uh, for me, the one that I have circled on my Ooh. calendar, and this is a matchup yes. that I like perpetually have circled on uh, my calendar every single season, LAFC mm -hmm. taking on the Seattle Sounders, 6 p.m. Yeah. Eastern on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and TSN. Okay? Both teams coming off wins all right lafc as we mentioned they beat austin in their first match of the season and then seattle put up four, four goals four nil against mini who is a team that like a lot of people have been very very good in uh in the west this year so that was a, a really really impressive matchup raul Ruiz diaz scored a brace in that one uh, he has five goals in four games against lafc so this guy just like He's another one that probably has this circled on his calendar because he just he loves scoring goals 
against that team. And then LAFC, I mean, can we talk about like the drama that happened last week? Yeah. Like with the like Vela, <laughs> yeah. like, oops. Bob Bradley like, uh, ooh, I, yeah, maybe, maybe uh, jump the gun on that one. So will Vela play the full the full 90? Will we see that? Um, is Diego Rossi going to be healthy? This, these are all all questions that I have. There are there's a, there's a ton of reasons to to watch this one. Um, these are two of the the top teams in the West. You know, perennial kind of favorites. A lot of people mm-hmm, having them mm-hmm. sort of you know one one two at the top of the the standings yeah. at the end of the season. It's going to be fun. It always is. Do you do you? If fair to say this, I know it's a a, a young. Uh, but can we call it a rivalry matchup almost? Yeah, I know there's I a lot it, of distance. I, between yeah. LA and Seattle, but you and you know, but I feel like these matchups is always very tense. They they meet often in the playoffs, and like yep. you said, it's it's two of the clubs are always at the top of the West. Is this just yeah. like a little rivalry matchup? I do. I I think we can call that. I mean, I feel like we should like claim that. that on this show right now. Yes. Um. Yeah. We need to just like sort of establish this. We need to come up for a really good name for it. We need your help, guys. Help us come up with the That's name. What- for this Seattle LAFC rivalry, because I, I, it is 100% a rivalry because the, these matchups mm-hmm. are always, they're always so good. They're so good. Yes. There's always drama. And as that builds, yeah, this is, we got to figure this out, Peel. This is our homework. I, this come is, this is, name. we got to come up with a name. Uh, we got to mm-hmm. come up with a cool name. I know you're great <laughs> at coming up with great names um, for, I have for, coming, for, for combining things and everything. <sighs> Um, Brucho, um, I believe is, is Brucho the correct, is <laughs> that the you. correct name? Thank you. Brucho. Brucho. There you go. Yes. Um, that is, so we'll, that is we won't, we won't explain that. Uh, we'll let people kind of naturally figure out what Brucho is. And I think you've, you've explained it, but Susanna, for me, I, I love that LAFC Seattle. Yeah. Sign me up, sit me on the couch. I'm, I'm into it for me. I'm going Sunday. The only game on Sunday, mm. LA galaxy, New York, Red Bulls, FS1. 5.30 p.m. also on Fox Support Face and TSN. This, this, whoop, whoop. There's so many storylines with this game. Uh, you know, you start with L.A. and Chicharito. What can he do for an encore performance? The, the brace oh in the first, first game. I, great, great uh, question posed by our, our good friend Hurt Gomez. Said that he's putting her, uh, Chicharito yeah. over 15 and a half the over. Goals. Uh, what say over. you, Susanna Collins? Susanna Collins, are you going more or less than fifteen and a half for Chichi? I'm saying I'm taking Chicharito. the over. No, I'm I'm going to take the over. I think that this is the guy. This is he's. It's almost like he's been reborn. You know, like this. Just he's yeah. got this new lease on life. You saw the emotions after that first game, and they kept saying it on the broadcast. But it was like you know he got that that monkey off his back. You know, and they right. were two. The two goals that he scored were just they were quintessential chicharito goals like that is what that Mm -hmm. guy does he finds space in the box it's it and then he finishes and that i think to to kind of you know re re find that rediscover that for him is huge and i predicted it when at the start of the season last year before Mm. it was just you know kind of a watch i was like i think i said it on extra time i was like chicharito is gonna score a ton of goals and now i love what Greg Vanny has done. I love the adjustments that he made at yes. halftime to kind of get him more involved. They, that was the issue last year for Chicharito. Um, they didn't, he, he didn't fit into the system, you know, like it, it was, it, they couldn't figure out how to get him involved. And I think that Greg Vanny has a much clearer idea as to how to utilize him and to, to get the most out of him. And you saw it in the second half when they, you know, sort of brought everyone a little bit higher up. It was just like, this is, this is how Chicharito is going to be successful, and so I'm taking I'm taking the over. Let's I love go. that. I love that. I love that. And 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 not to be you know when I mean, we spoke a lot about L.A., I would be remiss if I did not speak about the Red Bulls. Naturally, I mean the the era Gerhard Struber's the era of him continues to evolve. They continue yeah. to get younger this this week, making moves to get a 20 year old Frankie Amaya from FC FC Cincinnati. Um, and then the Polish international, Patrick Kilmala, I hope I'm saying his last name correct, um, a 22-year-old. So it's very good. he continues to mold into the, his system. So I'm anxious to see um, how this group comes together. Um, but regardless of, of the players and stuff, if it's anything like the Sporting Kansas City game, the Red Bulls are here and they are going to run. They are going to be very mm-hmm. energized. Uh, they are going to press and they are going to be extremely fun to watch. And oh, by the way, we saw him earlier, Caden Clark, 17-year-old. Um, 
he's becoming must watch. Uh, just the yeah. goals he's scoring, the performances he's putting out there. So, needless to say, Sunday around five thirty p.m., I will be tuning in to this match it's as well. Fun. LA Red Bull. It's going to be awesome. I cannot wait. Yes. Put you in, coach. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. All right, guys, just a reminder, MLS action kicks off two nights. Two nights. Yes. We don't have to wait very long. Sporting Kansas City taking on Orlando. That is going to be a great matchup. That's at 7.30 p.m. Eastern on FS1, Fox Deportes, and TSN. And then on Saturday, y'all, lots of matches for you guys to dive into. Um, San Jose taking on Dallas. That game at 3.30 p.m. Eastern on Univision 2 DNA, Twitter, and DAZN. Um, and then, of course, the, that matchup that we talked about, LAFC against Seattle, 6 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and TSN. Those are some fire, fire matches. And then we wrap things up on Sunday, as Keel mentioned, um, the Galaxy taking on the New York Red Bulls at 5.30 p.m. Eastern on FS1, Fox Deportes, and TSN. So much to look forward to. Keel, this is just the best way to kick off the weekend. Yes. Um, thanks for hanging with us. And guys, thanks for watching. Please get involved. Hit us up on that hotline. Hit us up on Twitter. We want to know what you guys are talking about. We want, want you to get involved in the group chat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, get involved. You know drop, drop a line in there. That's what just it's get involved. all about you. Just get involved. <laughs> it's all about you, really. Guys, have a fantastic weekend. Enjoy the soccer. We'll see you soon.